I'm I'm here with Shay and the Cat Skills, and I just want to give a shout out to Shay. If you if any check out her website or their website, and um, I just I got a, a fabulous tarot reading from Shay. I think almost a year ago, and it was just it's and it's and it's, it was an experience, and I and I my heart still refers to it to keep me inspired. So. Oh, um, thanks, Cheryl. Yeah, so I just so please please check out in the show notes um, Shay's website. Um, so today we're going to be talking about um, oh my gosh, I get tears just thinking about this. Moving away from the question that you ask yourself after a friendship breakup or the loss of a friend, or what feels to be a loss of a friend because I don't think we ever lose people. I, I and we talked about this earlier in another small episode. Um, what is wrong with me? The question I think a lot of people ask is what is wrong with me? Why, why do I keep losing people? And I wanna challenge that question and say, what is the other question we ask besides that? I mean, and looking at things that appear to be breaks in, in, in our lives. I, I appreciate you naming that we're in tender territory. And that when you initially told me about this podcast, friends I'm no longer friends with, and I did a review, you know, I've had a lot of friend breakups in my life and there's a lot of shame there. And I think the question kind of what's wrong with me, you know, points to, you know, doing some, you know, self-reflection, which can be really important. And also... I think that it's a question that we ask because there's so much pain there. There's so much grief. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we have a word for when a marriage breaks up, it's a divorce, but we don't have language for a friend breakup. And I feel like, you know, friendship is so minimized as a relationship in the culture. You know, they're just a friend, just a friend, like, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, what's wrong with me is a natural question to ask. It can be a defense, I think, against really feeling um, what a rupture is. And I think that one of the questions or one of the ways of looking at ruptures or friendship breaks is, you know, what what becomes visible in the break Mm -hmm. Um, that when a friendship ruptures we we see edges that were not visible before something that was okay with us before is not okay with us anymore Mm -hmm. um or maybe the edge isn't so clear but it it offers a way in to start asking like what what happened here what is this um and you know getting past the whole shaming and blaming aspect Mm -hmm. to really get into like, what is important to me? What do I want in my relationships? And I'll just share, you know, I shared this with you before that when, when you launched this podcast, I actually did a ritual myself. It was Venus retrograde. It seemed like a good time to do a ritual like this, where I wrote out all of my relational ruptures that had happened in the last several years and wrote down the things that became clear to me in those ruptures. And I basically made a list of 13 relational observations and lessons that have become clear to me. And they've become sort of like relational precepts, Mm. um, things for me to understand, like, this is what's important to me in relationship. This is what I value. Mm. And it's just led to a lot more um, self-knowledge that, you know, um, certain things I just um, aren't, I'm not going to do over again in mm-hmm. relationships because, because of those hard lessons. Mm-hmm. I, th- I feel like I, okay. I feel like what you're saying, th- there's some two things that are like really, uh, affecting me and what you're saying, which is like, one is we're, I got, we're in a culture that tells us not to feel pain that doesn't want us to ask the hard questions because when you ask the hard questions or when you explore, when you reflect, you do, you do get invited into some uncomfortable feelings. And so I love that you have the courage to take time to get into the, to, to, to go there. Um, and I spent, I think probably 
most of my, most of my life until my mid to late thirties avoiding. I didn't know what was going on with me. Like everything was underneath, but it felt like I was living in a horror movie. <laughs> it just did. It did. I mean, that's how big my, my emotional life is. And my life is, you know, if you saw it on the surface, like it's a pretty good life. And I was like, it's underneath. It's like, it's terrifying. And since I have opened up and reflected and spent time with wondering about, about why's and why did this happen and why 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 was that for me and that has been very informative and powerful to to know to know who i am so i love that and that leans towards self self acceptance to me um and then another thing okay can i can i find it again ah uh, yes another thing is something when you talked about this i thought wow i realized and i'm just gonna i'm gonna say it i'm not proud of it but i realized that i chose there's one particular friend who i chose and i think i chose them i mean i did love them i don't want to i don't i'm going to say this but i don't think it disregards that there was love there i still love them but i think i built my self-esteem on this relationship and chose out of self-esteem versus other um i think that was the main i think that was a huge reason why i chose this person and and i and i thought wow that was wildly unfair to to this other person it's it set them up it set them up it set our friendship up and i couldn't realize that until the end of the friendship until I think a month or two after it was like done. Um, and so I think it's, it's, I think what can come up is really, re, is really figure, figure out reasons why, why did I, why did I choose this person? Why, what was I, ex, what was I expecting and expectations and friendships? And, and after this break, I was like, I'm not having any more best friends because I feel for me, and that may not be true for the long run, but for now, I'm like, I think it sets the other person up that they need to be this for me. And I think that the, I, so I'm really dismantling what is best friend? What is best friend? Oh my God. So relatable. I feel like there are like 60 different tributaries that I want to go down here in conversation <laughs> with you. Number one, I really appreciate the whole both and like the, the friendship, there was real love there. And, you know, you see this about yourself. I feel like I see that in a lot of my relationships too. I mean, there absolutely was real love and I was not capable of a certain level of intimacy. And so mm. my relationships reflected that. And when mm. that changed about me, then, you know, these relationships didn't work in the same way. So I feel like the both and is really important. Like the one doesn't cancel the other out. Mm. Um, the other thing that you're saying about the whole best friend setup, I feel like, you know, I, I feel like in my friendships, I have a diverse portfolio of relational assets. And, and, <laughs> and what I mean by that is like, not everyone can give me everything. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I have a lot of really rich, deep, intimate friendships. Mm -hmm. And there are people that I go to for this kind of care. And there's people mm -hmm. I go to for that kind of care, but expecting that one best person is going to be able to do everything Mm -hmm. is a setup. And like the culture tells us, I mean, the culture tells us that person should be your spouse, basically. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. Which right. Um, is also a setup, I think. I do too. Um, but I, I think that taking the pressure off any one friendship and kind of, and kind of spreading that, that those needs around mm -hmm. really, I think is healthy for it's, I don't know, it feels healthy in my relationships to spread that around. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. Yes. I say yes. I say yes to that all. Yes. Um, so we also talked about, I was sort of jumping to a, a new topic is like, as, as astrology. Um, so it can also depend on, I, I, so 
I have a belief that I, I mean, I, 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 pra- I have a lot of practices in my life. One of my practices that I practice very long is a Buddhist practice with the SGI. Um, and I chant Namya Horenge Kyo, but I do a lot of other practices as well. <clears throat> and I feel that there's a long story that this, that this life is Cheryl, Cheryl Grafe is just one life of many. And so I feel like there is also a soul contract with these friends because I don't think that they're, <laughs> I don't think they're going away. You know, I think that they're, they may be gone right now in Cheryl's life, but I think they may come back. I, I imagine they will some for sure. But let's talk about, is there anything like about astrology, about like looking at the long story or astrology about our souls and what well, that was, says? There was something that I learned. I took a class last summer, God, what is time in the pandemic, um, with Demetra George, who wrote the book, uh, Mysteries of the Dark Moon. And she was teaching this class, I think the 20th or 30th anniversary of the book. It's an amazing book. And she was talking about um, sort of your natal, the, the phase that the moon was in when you were born, your natal moon phase. And I think you and I are both balsamic moons. We're balsamic moons, moon, sir, yes. And she said something, she was going through each of the natal moon phases and she said something about balsamic moons. And I was like, oh my God. She said, it's um, characterized by intense relationships, instant recognition and disappearance. It really took a lot of the shame out of, my friend breakups to be like, oh, this is just part of my kind of constitution as a dark moon person that like, I'm going to have several lifetimes in this lifetime. Like I'm going to have this whole life. And then that life is just going to end. And a new life is going to start in the middle of this life. So I really think that there are, you know, it's, it's, the sort of frame that looks at endings as failures. Mm. And I think that, I mean, that's so deep in our culture that, you know, death is the ultimate failure as opposed to just like a part of life. So, you know, understanding, I don't know why these relationships came into my life and why they ended. Um, And, you know, to have that larger view, I think takes some of the sting out of, you know, the, the sort of living through it. I'm just going to have silence there because that is, that's something to take in for me, something to take in. 